All right. So welcome back, folks. Um, we're here live at SEPC Southern Exposure. Uh, I've been joined by Mike Downey from Military Produce Group. Mike, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. What do you think so far of the show? I mean, I know we're just getting kicked off, but it's... Yeah, it's interesting. I was talking to somebody just a couple minutes ago about how much things have changed with this show. You know, my first show was the first show here, and it was here in this building, and it was oh, really? 2004, and um, th 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 it's probably 30 or 40 times as many people as we had then. It was, it was a, you know, maybe a couple hundred people then, so... Yeah, Southern really Exposure is definitely the king of the regional shows. I mean, I think... Um, back to the first one. I didn't come to the first one, but um, I was here for many years in a row, uh, made some great relationships that I still have today, um, great friends, business and personal. Um, so yeah, I definitely, I think uh, it's super important to be here and people seem to enjoy it. And it's, you know, the weather's not bad, especially for Northerners and yeah. folks from Canada yeah. and stuff like that. So I, I, I certainly that's the draw. I mean, a lot <laughs> of these, you see a lot of the, the uh, Northeastern folks and the the folks from Canada here, and they're here to, to be warm as well as to work a little bit. Well, honestly, I live in South Texas near the border, and it gets pretty humid. I mean, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's subtropical, classified as subtropical. I, mean, when, I always joke that when birds fly south for the winter, they come to the Rio Grande Valley. So, But yeah, I, I didn't expect it to be more humid when I walked out <laughs> of my room today than at home. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of a shock. But um, tell us about you know, what you do, what your role is at MPG, Military Produce Group, and um, how long you've been there? Yeah, uh, well, right at eight and a half years now, I, I am their um, director of uh, procurement and business development and essentially run the inbound supply chain and go out into the industry to try to help us find some more business. We are, we are not, a lot of people think we're a government owned organization or something of that nature. We're a privately held company, so we are... Um, we're out there fighting the battle with everybody else, looking for more and more business and trying to trying to do the best we can with what we do. For, so for those that don't know why they would assume you're a government agency, yeah. it's because... Well, our name is Military Produce Group, so yeah. that's the first thing that I think leads people down that path. And then our, our bulk of our business is supplying produce to the military commissaries. So mm -hmm. obviously we work with the DOD and uh, the Defense Commissary Agency, mm -hmm. DECA. Um, they are our priority customer and, and certainly our largest. We've been servicing them for 25 years now as military wow. produce, 26 years. Um, and uh, we essentially are, are their retail arm. We, we manage all of their procurement, their, their marketing, the distribution, the, um, we set their pricing, uh, we create their there, you know, we work with them, but we create their promotions on a weekly basis with them. So we have a, a, a pretty good um, partnership with them and, and certainly uh, collaborate a lot with, with the Defense Commissary Agency. That sounds like exciting work. And so you're based out of Norfolk yourself? Norfolk, you Virginia. Virginia. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Did I, I hope I said that right, because I get a lot of heat about my, my Boston accent. And, <laughs> and I, I tend to add an extra R at the end, but it's Norfolk. <laughs> Virginia, not oh. Norfolk, as I. So I guess you grew up in Boston. Yeah, I, I did. Okay. I did, yeah. uh, what'd you do before before MPG? So before MPG, I was uh, I spent some time um, in California. I was with a company called Marcon Cooperative, also. Okay. Obviously, in the produce yeah. industry. Uh, I was a Marcon guy. Sure, sure. They're a, uh, a a pretty large food service purchasing cooperative. Director of purchasing there, and uh, after that, for a short while, I I was. Um, doing a consulting business and, and running a distribution business as well. So. Any hobbies in particular other than solving the, a lot, lot of hobbies. the military's uh, I, uh, produce woes? Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I like to, I like to play golf fairly badly. Um, <laughs> Everybody says, that. yeah, it's yeah. In my case, it's pretty true. Um, I, I play a little guitar and sing a little bit. If, if you don't have a good ear for music, you might, you might enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, what else do I do? I, you know, I, I, I run a lot, um, try to stay healthy. You know, I love to cook, um, outdoor things, hike, 
you know, a lot of fruits and vegetables in your diet. Are you, pra are you I try. practicing what you preach? I try, you know, I, I eat fairly well. You know, I just got to, I was talking to a friend last night and, and saying that the thing that always gets me is the sugar, the sweets. I got to stay away yeah. from those and, uh, and work at that a little harder. So, but yeah, I, I so do. So Craig calls that Satan. <laughs> yes. Says sugar is Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I should listen to Craig cause he's in better <laughs> shape than me. <laughs> That's funny. Tell me a little bit about, um, so for example, obviously you're supplying produce to the military. Is that simply domestically for commissaries here or is any of that fresh produce go overseas, for example, for deployed troops? Most of ours is, uh, they call it CONUS, Continental United States. Okay. Um, we, um, we do supply uh, uh, Cuba and Puerto Rico. And if you're familiar with the United States military, there's a base in Cuba called sure. uh, Guantanamo Bay. Oh, that, yeah. Heard of that we, one. That we send produce to twice a week uh, so that uh, those military patrons can have their fresh fruits and vegetables as well. We send some produce to Guatemala and Honduras as well, but the rest of it is all in the United States. We also supply the military ships that are ported in uh, the port of Norfolk. Oh, well. For folks that have never been in a commissarium, I've been um, in Pendleton, mm. right? Or no. What's the, where's M MCRD in San Diego and wherever the Marine uh, graduation is? Uh, uh, I think Pendleton's yeah, actually a base that's further away. Yeah. Um, but I've been to the MCRD graduation and been in there. I mean, it's basically like going into a Dillard's or a department store. I mean, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Um, which rightfully so. I mean, the, our, our military should have access to all that stuff and they make it a heck of a lot easier and I think even more affordable. Yeah. Right. It, yes. And I mean, that's one of our goals is that is to make sure that they have a it's a benefit. It's a government uh, benefit for them, and uh, they are subsidized by the government so that those stores don't make money, so there's a discount there, and then we try to obviously get them the best pricing that we can. The uh, interest of another interesting thing you mentioned about walking in the stores, they're all different. So every single one of their stores is a different format, which makes life you know, somewhat challenging oh, yeah. for, for them to, to operate and for us to sort of figure out what they need for each individual facility. There's uh, 93 that we service in the United States, and they are, you know, every single one of them has a different layout. So, so interesting. I, I guess with that mix uh, of folks from the military, I mean, you don't really have the geographic cultural dynamic, right? Um, but you kind of have to solve for all of it, right? If somebody wants, it's, you know, a, a cultural food of some sort, I mean, um, you're not bound by the geographic uh, location. It's really, you could, you kind of have, I mean, if you're trying to solve for it, I guess I'm assuming they do. Um, you have to solve for a little bit of everything, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Yeah. And, uh, that's so true. There's, you know, you, you, just because you're in Louisiana doesn't mean that people are eating Cajun food every, yeah. every day. That's, it's a different, you know, you got folks from all over the, the country really mm -hmm. in every location. So there is a, a flavor, but the, the local flavor does, does um, stay true to a degree, you know. We sell a lot of collards out of our Birmingham distribution sure. center that are the whole collards, and we don't sell those in our other two because there's no need for them in, in the others. But uh, but for the most part, you're correct. There's a, you know, we can, you can have any type of demographic in any any of the areas. I think it, it lends itself as much to the branch of the military. The Air Force tends to be a more affluent community, uh, than the army, for instance, so they'll buy a little, little bit different. Buying them. habits are a little bit different. A little bit, yeah. But uh, each store gets primarily the same mix. It's a, you know, the military patron it, it doesn't have a ton of disposable income. Most of them, so um, we, you know, we kind of think of ourselves as more of that uh, meat and potatoes supplier, and we dabble with the specialties. Is there promotion actually for like in-store promotions or do they go that far? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we sit down and write promotions every week for, really? for them. Yeah. And it's the same as, you know, when I was working with a retailer, we'd, we sit down and we look at what's seasonally appropriate. We, you know, put it on an ad planner, we present it to them and, and the stores, we don't have the flyer, uh, that most stores have. We we do a printed one that we supply them each week that they print up and put in the stores, but we're not four weeks out with our with our promos like most retailers because of that. There's no, you know, we're not locked into a flyer. So we have a little bit more flexibility. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, Mike, I guess to give you an option, right? I had a, a question, either initiative with MPG or a particular point of focus, anything exciting that you're working on right now that there would be 
safe to be out in the public. Yeah. Out in the public uh, yeah, I, forum. I think most of our stuff is pretty safe. It's 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 really nuts and bolts produce. You know, okay. our, I I would say our our focus as an organization obviously is is on the commissaries and maintaining that business, growing that business. There's a you know our our strategic initiatives this year are all around um, generating sales, um, and and the people, the people in our organization. So what you know. I think every every organization, it's important that you, you know, you look at what uh, what the culture is and 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 growing that culture. We're we're a small business. We're, as I mentioned earlier, twenty six years in business now, and I think over the last few years we've had sort of an evolution of leadership and and the thought process of um, working with our employees and and um, balancing life. I think COVID triggered a little bit of that in terms of giving us the opportunity to really look at how we managed our people and, um, and, you know, take advantage of some of the opportunities that are out there now to allow people to work remote and, and things of that nature. So, um, we are, we are, I guess, on a continuous improvement journey now this year. Uh, and a lot of that is around how do we build sales? How do we gain momentum in the commissaries? The military is not necessarily growing today, but and hasn't been for a while. So we've seen, you know, our sales kind of level and decline uh, as that has occurred. And so for us, it's how do we get more of our product into the into that that military patron's mouth? So education might be a little bit right. That's I mean, part as far as from the promo or for sure. uh, promotion side. Um, actually, that that you just reminded me of something I wanted to ask you. Um, I mean, you're competing with food service, right? Um, you're talking about kind of right. I mean, yeah. you're competing for that dollar. We're competing with. I think we're yes. I mean, the, any retailer is c competing with sure. with food service in yeah. terms of of that. I, I think for us, our challenge is really the same as any retailer. We're we're competing with we're competing with the restaurants, but we're also competing with the WalMarts and the yeah. Aldis and the Lidl's and you know they. I think the that our shopper is the same one who's shopping at those facilities. So. Part of our challenge is that East Coast, uh, there's a lot of those folks out there. There's a lot of new stores that have come in, in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we see a we see the military moving off base and driving past four or five retailers before they get to a commissary. Oh, okay. So I, I think we have a similar challenge. Um, the um, the stores themselves are a little unique. They're operated by government employees. So. Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk about fresh produce, you and I have been in this industry for a long time. And we've, I've worked in retail for years. Uh, most of the folks, I think, in this industry at some point have worked in food service or retail. So kind of have an understanding of those operations. Those government employees don't necessarily have that. So we have a, you know, we have a team out in the stores that is working to train them and, and help them understand how to really operate a retail operation in this and a produce department. Uh, so that creates a little bit of an interesting. So the turnover dynamic. is a little bit different for different reasons, it is. right? It um, is. For their, you know, based on assignments, I'm assuming. But um, so value added, prepared meals, that's all super popular right now. Is is that space um, growing in commissary? It is. Yeah, it is. You know, we're. I think we we kind of come behind the rest of the industry as far as those types of trends go, but. Certainly, we're you know the value added thing has been growing for a lot of years, and we're you know we're growing that along with everybody else. It's one of the one of the commodity groupings that we tend to focus on, and we look at you know when we come out to these shows, we see you know everything that's going on. We go into other stores, we see what's going on, and and um, we have to we have to be a little bit more I think strategic about what we carry, uh, just be. Because some of the real high end stuff is not going to be what sure. is going to move in a commissary. At the end of the day, you're adding labor to it, right? That's that's and, part um, of it. Yeah. So yeah. you know, I know that at home, at least, my wife talks about you know, I'll see her you know cutting up fruit and putting it in cups and all this stuff for for the kids. And I think you know they should cut it up themselves or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, she has better judgment than I do. But she says, you know, this is how they'll consume it. Like if it's cut and ready to go, boom, they'll you know throw it back and it's yeah. over. Right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're trying to get them to, to consume more or to eat their fruits and vegetables. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, mean, I think for travelers, uh, when I'm traveling, I, I, I buy a lot of pre-cut, you know, convenience, 
at home as well. Um, during the week, if I'm working from home and not traveling, um, I find myself, you know, throw a steamer bag in the, in yeah. the microwave, mix it with some olive oil, a couple, some seeds and, um, an apple and avocado, throw it together. I could mm -hmm. eat that every day. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's fresh and well, it's, it's just, it's better than going to drive 10 minutes to go get something yeah, to drive through. So. Absolutely. I'm with you. I've actually jumped on that ju juicing trend here in the last year. And boy, that's a great way to just get, you know, five or six uh, pieces of produce. And now that down. can work. I mean, that now you're talking about I, uh, work. But... Yeah, I've got a routine set up in the oh, really? morning. I get up and just... Is that routine include somebody else cleaning up for you? No, 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 no. I, I do the whole thing. Because <laughs> uh, it's messy. Yeah. Uh, I bought one of those masticating uh, oh, yeah. juicers and it's... A... That's a little bit more... Uh, yeah, I have a ninja that... Oh, okay. I just put a little protein in there. And oh, no. I tried to... Like, apples and... I tried yeah. to juice some kale and I juiced like a, Ooh, yeah. a mountain of kale to get that much juice. <laughs> and then I tried some turmeric and then I tried to yeah. juice some beets yeah. without cooking them. That was oh, a mess. Wow. Uh, it's like trying to juice a rock. You so, got like one of those those high-powered commercial grade ones. Uh, right? yeah, maybe, I mean, no, I got like a Bed Bath & Beyond. Maybe that's what oh. I'm out of business. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, man. So, Mike, I, I think... Um, what you do is awesome. I mean, obviously it's, it's exciting for me, um, to hear more about anything that's to do with our military. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I think for most folks that, uh, are listening, they obviously have a soft spot in their heart for our servicemen and women. Thank you for being with us. Um, did, did we miss anything? Is there anything else that we want to cover today? Yeah, no, no. I just think you, you just hit on a great point. I mean, we're certainly proud to be able to do what we do and that, you know, we're certainly proud to be able to serve the customers that we serve. So, yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. I watched Top Gun 2 on the way here. Yeah, we hope so I'm that. All, I'm pretty pumped up. We hope that, uh, you know, we hope that the suppliers who who work with us feel the same way. And I think they do. I, I think everybody appreciates it. So, yeah. Is there any kind of gathering that you all do, like a conference or anything like that for suppliers? You know, we haven't. Uh, we, we've actually talked about doing something like that. Um, Norfolk, Virginia is not a produce uh, mecca. Mecca. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. It's it's not a place where a lot of folks come. So we've talked about we'll host do we want to do uh, yeah. We've talked about do we want to do like a supplier summit at one of the you know these events and um, yeah, I, I could see us doing something like that. That'd be really cool. Yeah. yeah. Sign us up. Okay, we will. All right. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> hey, appreciate it. Man.